guys! Today's video is all about adaptations and we're going to be talking about two types of adaptations specifically as we go through our theme today. We're going to talk about physical adaptations and behavioral adaptations. The reason I have Phil here is because I can point out a couple of physical adaptations that are very unique to cats. Specifically, whiskers. Do you know why cats have whiskers? Cats have whiskers as part of their sensory mode to know what is around them and sense things. You can also tell a lot about a cat's whiskers. If you can look and see here, you can tell that Phil is very upset with being in the video today and his whiskers are really sprayed out. Now, there's also different behaviors that Phil will do. Like for example, you saw he just tried to reach down and bite me as a way to get out of here. That is a behavior that cats have learned when dealing with certain situations. So we're going to take a look in today's video at different... Thank you, Phil. Hello. Yep. Uh, we're going to look, take a look at different animals and how they have both physical and behavioral adaptations to help them survive in their environments. So let's dive in and check it out. So we are going to talk about physical adaptations. And when we think about physical adaptations, there's two main areas that we should focus on. First of all, we should think about specific body parts like feet and teeth, and also body coverings. And so let's first start off with teeth. I've got two pictures here uh, that showcase different teeth of two different animals. You can see on the skull on the right, the teeth are very pointy and sharp. And it might be a little bit more difficult for you to see on the skull on the left. You might see these things that almost look like footprints from a really thick hiking boot. But those footprints are actually the teeth that we are looking at. You can tell that they are very flat and they have very specific grooves. Well, by looking at the teeth, it can tell us what type of consumer or eater these two animals are. So if we look at the skull on the right with the very sharp and pointy teeth, we can tell that that is a carnivore. You might say, how can I tell it's a carnivore? Well, carnivores are meat eaters, and so because they are meat eaters, they would need to have to tear the flesh of the animals that they eat. And so these very sharp and pointy teeth are going to help them out with that. And in regards with our other one that's at the opposite end of the spectrum, we, these are actually elephant teeth. And these flat teeth help the elephant to grind down the plants that this elephant eats, which means that the elephant is an herbivore. herbivore. So by looking at their teeth, you can tell what sorts of things that they're going to need in their environment in order to eat, be able to help them to survive by what it is they actually need to eat. So teeth can actually give us clues to the types of consumers that these animals are. Let's take a look at this other body part that actually features the feet and a little bit of body coverings as well. When we look at these two feet side by side, you can tell that they are made for two very different types of environments. This foot on the right actually has two toe-like features with a harder area in the front that can help them to manage unsteady terrain. And you can see that terrain in the other parts of the image, that there's lots of rocks and maybe loose gravel, loose sand, loose dirt that it has to be able to go through. When you look at it a little bit further, you can also see that, that this animal has very short fur. Well, that's going to give you some very specific clues as to the environmental clues of this animal and what this animal actually needs to be able to get around in its environment. As compared to this animal over here that has very small toe-like areas with a paw pad in two different areas with lots of fur coming out. And this fur uh, can give us some clues about the environment as well. Now you can tell that this picture isn't actually taken in the animal's environment, but because of all of the extra covering here, we can tell that this animal is designed for a very cold environment and that these paw pads can help to give it some traction in that environment as well. And if you haven't figured it out just yet, you can tell that the foot on the right is a camel's foot and the foot on the left is a polar bear. This chart is designed to help you organize and better understand different physical adaptations and is broken into three columns. The what, the type 
of physical adaptation and how it relates to either the environment, the climate, or the survival of the animal. So let's think back to one of the examples that we had in the last slide. Extra fur on feet. Well, this is going to actually relate to body coverings, which then further relates to how it's going to survive in the very cold climate of that environment. Using a table like this is just another tool to help you better classify, understand, and break down different types of physical adaptations for an animal. And when you're looking at an animal, they will have multiple types of physical adaptations. So this can help you break it down into smaller chunks. Behavioral adaptations relate to what an animal is actually doing. For, and there are different examples of this. One is niche. An animal's niche is its role in an ecosystem. For example, if you look at this picture below of chimpanzees, you can see that this chimpanzee is checking out the other chimpanzee's teeth. That might be its role in their ecosystem with the other population of chimpanzees. This one might be the one that goes around and checks everybody's teeth out. It might be like the dentist chimpanzee of um, the community. And so a niche is essentially a role. Everything in an ecosystem has a purpose or a role. And if it doesn't have a purpose or a role in an ecosystem, then it might not actually be able to survive in the long term in that specific ecosystem. Another type of behavioral adaptation is how it relates to predators. Perhaps how it relates when it is approached by a predator or if an animal um, is predatory on other animals, then how does it do that? How does it attack other animals and gets food to be able to survive? The last type of behavioral adaptation is a social behavior. Uh, obviously chimpanzees have a very social environment that they live in. They live in a community of other chimpanzees and there are specific social behaviors that that community accepts. Like for example, in the video, we saw the uh, social grooming going on. Social grooming is a very specific behavior that helps them to survive in their specific community or population of animals. There's one last thing that could actually layer over and be a part of all three of these type of behavioral adaptations, and that's the idea of communication. Um, different animals will communicate with other animals in different ways. In some ecosystems, the animal's role or their niche in the ecosystem might actually be to communicate when predators are coming, and they might communicate that in a very specific or unique way. For example, a white-tailed deer can communicate with the other deer around that there's a predator coming without having to say a word by raising up its tail and showing that symbolic white flag that there is danger nearby. Um, this could also be used and communication can be used uh, and that relates to predator defense and it can also be used as a social behavior to the other animals that are in it, its population in its ecosystem. This table is designed to help you classify behavioral adaptations of an animal. Again, it has just two columns, allows you to think about the behavior and a way to specifically classify it in relationship to what type of behavior that it is. So again, let's think of an example from the last slide and relate it to the white-tailed deer where they lift the tail to warn about predators. That would be able to fit under two types of classifications. It would be able to fit under communication and it would be able to fit under social. There's one last type of adaptation that could fall underneath either a physical or a behavioral adaptation. And that adaptation is known or referred to as mimicry. And essentially what this is, you might have a younger brother or sister that might try to mimic you or say everything and do everything that you do, or perhaps you did that to an older sibling uh, or friend. But it relates in the ecosystem world as a way that animals will either look like or sound like other animals in order to protect itself. Like for example, do you know what this is down here? Is it a snake? Actually, it is not. This is an example of a hawk moth caterpillar. And 
it looks like a snake by some of its features. It has this coloring on top. Those actually are not its eyes, but it has some colorings on top that make it look like it has eyes like a snake, which help to keep other predators away.